Okay, it's time to service your AC unit and you wanna do it yourself. Uh, today we brought some guest speakers in and I've been working with them a long time for about six years now. It's Marathon AC with Mario and Jeff. If you have any AC questions, I recommend checking them out. All right, let's bring them in. We have Jeff here with Marathon AC. Uh, he's gonna help us walk through the steps of how to service the AC unit by ourselves. And uh, uh, you wanna do this about every year. So how often do you recommend doing this? Yeah, Chris. Uh, so we recommend um, washing the unit every spring um, before summertime uh, okay. to get ready for the, the heat here in Houston. Um, and uh, the, the first step we do is go in and turn off the thermostat. Okay. so. Just, uh, and if you have multiple thermostats, you turn off every single one. So like in this house, we have three thermostats because we have three floors. So make sure every single one is turned off. And what's the main reason why we turn off the thermostats on the AC unit? The main reason to turn off the thermostats is for the unit not to run. Um, you don't want, um, you know, uh, power it engaged at the unit out here, um, as well as, um, you know, washing the unit down and throwing water back in your face. Yeah. So. So the main thing he's trying to hint at is electricity and water don't mix. So don't you don't want power running to something and spraying water on it. So to help protect yourself, you make sure that the you can either shut it off at the breaker or shut it off at the at the shutoffs at every unit to make sure that no power is running to your unit to be safe, right? That's right. All right. So the next step is whenever you were talking about spraying the unit, uh, we're gonna walk you through how to spray it, right? So. Uh, when you cover it around, you're hitting the fins, but you were talking about like low pressure. You don't want high pressure. Yes, you don't want any high pressure nozzle um, and make sure the fins aren't bending on the unit. So um, I'll turn on the water hose here and show you all how uh, to do that. You can see right here that it's really light pressure. You know, it's not, not heavy, heavy amount of water. So you're, you're not trying to blast the AC unit. Right. And as you're washing the unit here, you'll start to see the debris come out and it'll be discolored from the dirt. And a few times going up and down on, on each section here until it's clear. And you can also make sure the bottom of the unit that the breather holes down here are clear as well too, so the unit can drain out. And what we do is go up and down we don't want to go horizontally. We want to stay vertical. What's and the purpose of not going uh, horizontally? So if you go horizontally and you have um, high pressure, it'll bend the fins and okay. cause a restrict uh, restriction um, for the unit to breathe. So you want to stay vertical and move around the unit and um, you know do so for about 20 minutes or so okay. until the unit's clean. Nice. So something like this, you'd knock out maybe once a year, but I guess different scenarios would apply. So say like you have a, a dryer vent or like these crepe myrtles in place or dogs outside, how often would you spray it down then? Well, what you want to do is uh, determine on the factors, uh, pets, uh, like you said, Chris, uh, pets, uh, different types of trees you have around your home. Um, uh, the yard guys coming and trimming with the weed eater and things like that uh, will cause, why this unit's running, cause the air to suck in and pull that debris in. And so that's why we want at least once or twice a year to come out and wash these units down. Got it. And then uh, what about proper clearance? That's a question that comes up quite often with us. Sometimes builders put it too close to the wall or the fence, or they like to put these small bushes around, but eventually they grow up. How far away or how much space does this unit need? Yeah, so what we want to do is keep the unit uh, clear at least 12 inches around the unit. Um, try to keep bushes back. I know a lot of decorative um, plants and uh, homeowners associations want to put decorative plants around the unit, uh, but we, we still want to stay clear at least 12 inches for that unit to breathe. Okay, nice. All right, cool. So what's the next step after we clean this? And you're a homeowner you clean this what what would be the next step that we you make do? sure everything's dry and um we want to put the disconnect breaker or turn the breaker back on okay so before we even uh put this let this th unit run you let it dry out completely so you yes. let it sit for an hour or so and then uh then you turn the ac back on yes sir all right cool all right so after this we knock this out then uh we'll go up and uh, check out the attics sounds good
good. All right, go cool. the attics. <laughs> the coil in the attic. All right, Jeff, so the next step is uh, we want to focus on our returns of where the air is coming in, right? And our returns often get pretty dirty in the Houston area, especially for us. We have three dogs and those three dogs, sh I have a golden retriever and they shed all over the place. So the return is a pretty dirt, it gets really dirty in there, especially if your filter doesn't start there. So what are your recommendations for how to take care of this? And then also try to keep it cleaner, I guess. Right, um, a lot of uh, filters, you know, from Home Depot, whether it's Lowe's or your local hardware store, they actually are rated, you know, three to six months, um, one to three months. And um, that's not always necessary. Um, you know, depending on your environment, you might have to change it more frequently, whether it's um, uh, once a month, um, if you have pets, kids in and out of the house, um, things like that are gonna change um, whether or not, how often you change your filter. So my recommendation is always change it once a month when your electric bill comes in, um, get on a good routine to change it. Oh, once a month. Man, that's even more than, than I'm changing mine. I'm a, I think I'm on a three month rotation, but by the time I pull that thing out, it's dirty. Right, so, right. so that makes sense with dogs that uh, you really want to hit it like every month or even down to two weeks, right? Down to the right. two week mar Martian because you really want to keep this thing clean. So talk about, let's just kind of jump into like, say you don't change your filter, right? Say some people wait like a whole year to change it. How, how much do you think that shortens the life expectancy? expectancy of the unit it does especially on the newer high efficiency systems that puts a lot of restriction on the the motors now um, so it can cause failure in your motors on the furnace um, as well as freezing up your evaporator coil as well we find that pretty often our two most common problems in the houston area are roofs and acs so you know Houston's like the number one spot to own an AC business in the world, actually, I think. So you want to make sure that you change those air AC filters because that's the easiest step you can do to increase the life expectancy of the unit. Absolutely. All right, cool. So let's go up in the attic to show you how to change your filter and then um, how to keep it clean up there too as well. Up here, Mario's taking over the uh, second part of the AC. He has the hot job <laughs> up here. And uh, the first thing we wanna do is determine, uh, do you have any air leaks in the attic space? And how we do that is we just like to, I like to wave my hand around it, you know, just to try to get the feel. It's hot up here, anywhere you feel cold air. Are there any other tricks, you know, something as simple as that? No, basically just running your hands around it. I mean, you'll be able to feel the cold air leaking out. Right. That's so on the supply side, which is, you know, where the air comes from. Okay. The other trick is the, the return. That could also be detrimental to your to your electricity bill. Reason being, because if, if you have leaks on your return, it's gonna be sucking hot air. Oh yeah. Into your house. So it'll be pulling hotter air in the attic space. Yeah, and making yeah. you, your, your system inefficient. Okay, gotcha. So what's the best ways to determine uh, them, it's pulling the hot air? Because I feel like that'd be harder to detect. The best thing to do is get a professional Okay. Do a professional inspection on it, but if you want to do, if you're a hands-on type type person, you can get like a piece of toilet paper or tissue paper. Okay. And just run it around. Okay. And if you have a leak, there, it'll suck that paper somewhat. You know, it it it'll, it'll stick to the paper. Okay, got you. So pretty easy test, uh, but again, if you don't really feel confident and it's not, uh, and it, your AC just doesn't seem to be working right, make sure you call Marathon. Marathon will come out here and take care of you. Absolutely. So when we're putting the AC filter in correctly, what's the best way to determine that the AC, that we're putting it in the right direction? There's a little arrow on the filter. So how do we know which way it the travels? The arrow has to go towards the front of the unit. All the, all the filters have to be on the back end of the unit. There, There's no filters that are gonna go on the front of it. Okay. You're putting the filter after the coil, right. and if you do that, then your coil is going to get dirty, and the intent of the filter is to keep that coil clean. So it's so we have the filter on this side of the unit, and then what's the best way to determine that that arrow is facing the right way? So, so you want this arrow to be facing at the unit? Yes. Okay. You, you have the, if you do it if you pull it out while the unit is running. Yep you can feel where the suction is going, where the right. airflow is going by just sticking your hand in there. Right, just sticking so your you hand. you have to go in the direction of the air. The direction of the airflow, yeah. gotcha. 
And then my next thing that I see and I call out almost all the time is just because the air filter's there, that return is actually fairly dirty too as well. And I recommend to, to clean that out. What's the easiest way to do that? Uh, call, you can call us for a duct cleaning job. And we can do that for you. That's, okay. that's the only way to really do it. Okay, get it professionally down. So you just know. a vacuum cleaner won't knock uh, that out? You, I don't think you're gonna reach everywhere because <laughs> if you have dust and you return air, you're gonna have dust in the ductwork connected right. to that. So, yeah, so you're, it's just, not you're just doing enough. part of it and it's really not gonna help that much. So how often would you recommend that professional duct cleaning? I would say five years, every five to okay. 10 years, depending on, you know, the number of, of people that live in that house, how okay. many pets you have, you know, how often you change your filter. If you do it pretty regularly, you know, you, should, okay. you shouldn't have to do it that often. But. So situation dictates. So us having three dogs and uh, probably not the best at closing our doors all the time. That might be something that you might even have to do every year because, or every two years, let's say, because I'm right at the two year mark and I've noticed that inside my return, it is pretty dirty, so it is something that I'm probably gonna have to do pretty you know, often. In some of the new homes, unfortunately, the contractors, while they're building the house, oh, yeah. they run the AC. Yeah. So all the ductwork is dirty. So I know. probably got build up from that too as well. It, so it I got a brand new, yeah, okay. Exactly. All right, cool. So so the, the next step that I hear all the time is the primary drain line. Yes. How often would you clean this and how do you do it? Okay. On newer, any house built from 1995 to 2019, code change before we used to run the drain lines to the to the to a vent pipe. Mm -hmm. So you could just come and pour some chlorox, and that would probably clear the problem every year. Right, a cup of chlorox. It's not the case now because now they're connected to under a bathroom sink, right. where you have a collection of algae, uh, body fat, hair and Clorox is not going to get rid of that. Okay. The right thing to do is call a professional. You can call us and we'll go out there and take apart your trap under your sink, clear everything out. And you, you don't have to do that every year. You can do it like every three years. Okay, so the main, just general maintenance, the, the little bit of Clorox does help keep the main clean. It does, it but, does. But not the P-trap. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to help all the, it, 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 Clorox will clear Algae, the algae, which is what builds in the in the air conditioning secondary line or primary. Drain. Okay, but it will not do anything for hair or body fat or anything. Okay, so so just every time you change your filter, it's good to put a little bit of Clorox in there. But it's not the only thing you do. You have yeah, to you have to clean that P trap out. So if you don't know how to clean your P trap out, then you call a professional to make sure they clean that out. You say every three to five years. Yes, depending, depending on usage. Depending on the usage yeah. Okay, cool. So. The three easy steps um, whenever you're coming to change your AC unit is the first one is you want to clean the outside, clean the outside condenser. The second one is to change your filter very often, clean the return, so I guess four, and then always keep this primary drain line clear. And then check for air leaks pretty often and pretty unique. I had, before I even called them out, I was kind of doing a look over and I had an air leak on my own. So Mario's going to knock that out real quick. Yeah, and also before we move on to that, on, on his house he has a media filter, which is a filter that is good for six months. Right. You know, being that he has pets, he should he, you can change that one every four months. Okay, I do At it. Least during the summer months while it's hot. I do three months still. Yeah, so and, three months is good? And Yeah, every three months is fine. Okay. And since he has grills for the returns downstairs, some customers believe that you can also put a filter there. You, that is not needed and in, in fact it's going to be counterproductive to, to the usage of your to your system because you're creating a restriction. Gotcha. So you're restricting the airflow. Yeah, you're so restricting the airflow. Double filters are not good. You want a single filter. At our house we don't have bleach. Uh, Mary doesn't like to carry it in here so we uh, we carry vinegar. We use a lot of vinegar to clean and Jeff just informed us that vinegar is just as good to clean uh, the primary drain line whenever you're whenever you're trying to clear this primary drain line. So uh, one of the other steps you want to do whenever you're pouring this vinegar or bleach down there is make sure your unit is off because you don't want vinegar or bleach to splash back up in your face. So we're going to show you how to pour it in there. Mario here. So we have an access pipe here, which is known as a clean out and not everybody has it, but Every system should and just pour down in there. You need to pour maybe like 
half a cup top. And that should take care of the algae and dissolve it. So the conclusion to this uh, video here, uh, you want to service your AC once once a year. And if you don't service it once a year, it's going to cost you some money down the line. And then also you need, you want to change this filter pretty often, anywhere from two weeks all the way up to three months or the six month filters. The six month filters probably is not even a thing here in Houston, probably. So you're probably looking at every three months, two weeks to three months, you're going to change your filter depending on your scenario. If you don't like to do this type of stuff, you want to call an AC company like Marathon and Marathon will come out. They'll even put you on a scheduled plan. Do y'all do stuff like that? Yeah, we do. We do a spring and fall maintenance plan where we'll come out once in the springtime, uh, get you ready for summer. Um, you know, wash the condenser, treat the drain line um, as a few things. And, um, and then also come back in the fall time and get you ready for um, winter time. All right. So. Yeah, if you schedule something like that, you can't forget and you're really protecting your system. A system like this is not cheap. It's like $6,000 to put in an AC system right now. And you know, who, know, who knows how much it's gonna be a few years down the line. So you really wanna protect this. This is one of your most expensive items next to your roof. When you're, whenever you have your house, these are the two most common problem areas. So you wanna really service your AC unit and you wanna have a team behind you that can really take care of it. So. Uh, again, we're going to put Marathon's information below this video, and if you don't want to do it yourself, call Marathon. <laughs>